Channel 13 proudly presents Live from the Hollywood Bowl, a very special telecast of the annual Hollywood Bowl fireworks finale of the Los Angeles Philharmonic Summer Festival. Tonight's performance is being simulcast on 91.5 KUSC-FM to enhance your listening and viewing pleasure and is being brought to you in part by Mercedes-Benz, engineered like no other car in the world, and by Bank of America, doing the job for more Californians than any other bank, and by AT&T, international long-distance service, AT&T, the right choice. And by Arco, drive away pollution with Arco EC1, the first emission control gasoline. And by Pioneer, makers of laser vision. Pioneer, we bring the revolution home. And now, here are your hosts for tonight's special broadcast, Mr. Alex Trebek and Ms. Gail Eichenthal. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Gail and I are coming to you live from the Hollywood Bowl on an overcast Southern California evening. Threatening skies, I must admit. We have no idea what effect this is going to have on the evening's performance, but one thing we can say for certain, it has not dampened the enthusiasm of the 17,000 people who have come out here this evening for the annual fireworks finale, the closing concert by the world-renowned Los Angeles Philharmonic Orchestra, tonight under the direction of guest conductor Heichiro Oyama. That's right, Alex. This is going to be one of the most exciting concerts of the year with music of Antonin Dvorak and Grieg's ravishing piano concerto, a favorite one of, of yours. One of my favorites indeed. That's the right. featured pianist will be Emil Naumov, and we're also going to be treated to some of my other favorite music by Tchaikovsky. The irresistible Romeo and Juliet. It's going to be a night filled with beautiful music. That's right, and the most amazing display of fireworks you will ever see anywhere. However, before I tell you that this broadcast is being simulcast in stereo on 91.5 KUSC-FM radio. Yes. And before you can see any of those magnificent fireworks. Yes. I have to take a moment to uh, say that we're going to pause for some important messages from our sponsors. I've been waiting to hear you say those very words, Alex. As a matter of fact, so have the sponsors. You're tuned to 91.5 KUSC Los Angeles. Welcome to KUSC's live simulcast with KCOP Channel 13 of the grand fireworks finale from Hollywood Bowl. We'll rejoin Gail Eichenthal and Alex Trebek for the traditional singing of the national anthem. Good evening, I'm Gene Parrish. I'd like to extend to you a special welcome if you're tuning to KUSC for the first time tonight. I hope that you enjoy this evening's concert and will return to 91.5 KUSE for more great classical concerts from Los Angeles, Chicago, New York, Paris, and Berlin. We are a public radio station which broadcasts classical music without commercial interruption, the way it was intended to be heard. Now, does this sound familiar? KUSC fills your days and nights with great music. From the most recent minimalist master, Los Angeles Philharmonic's chief mover and shaker, managing director Ernest Fleischmann, he'll join conductor David Allen Miller, cellist Lynn Harrell, and the distinguished Polish composer Witold Ludosławski in a very special tribute to the L.A. Philharmonic Institute. And I understand that you went backstage and had a chance to talk to the master of pyrotechnics here for this fireworks. That's right. Uh, the genius of Gene Evans will be on display later on during the concert. He's the man responsible for our amazing fireworks display. And you'll all have an opportunity to see just how he accomplishes those amazing synchronized musical presentations. And of course, tonight's entire concert is being brought to you in stereo as a simulcast, not only on KCOP Channel 13, but also 91.5 FM K USC Radio. And we are awaiting the arrival of tonight's guest conductor. And speaking of that, gentlemen, is my information correct? Did he begin his musical career learning to play by ear? Heichiro Oyama is one of the most uh, astonishingly versatile musicians around. He did start to learn music by ear in the Suzuki method in his native Japan, but I think it's okay to say on the air that he failed miserably at the Suzuki method. Oh, really? After a couple of years, a nun at his school took him aside and said, 
cut Suzuki, let's really learn how to do music. He studied viola and violin, became a, a recording artist, a, a soloist, a recitalist. He is principal viola of the Los Angeles Philharmonic and just a few years ago, having only conducted for a couple of years, became the assistant conductor of this orchestra. He's the music director of several orchestras on the West Coast, the founder of the La Jolla Chamber Music Society. Uh, I think he must clone himself to do all these jobs. He's, He's an exciting man to watch on the podium. Let's take a few moments and talk about the program this evening. Uh, I think it's a true Pops concert program. All of the pieces of music that we will be hearing and watching played here this evening are going to be recognized by our viewers and our listeners. And we're going to start off with a lively Dvorak Slavonic dance. That's right. I think that's a winner. It's something for everyone. This is a beautiful Furiant by Antonin Dvorak. One of the works that won him his first international renown. This was uh, the first piece that started selling like hotcakes back in the 1870s and really made Dvorak's name. But he was a little uh, different from most of the other composers that we hear about who were virtuosos at a very young age. He began as a butcher and yet went into music later on and became a very popular composer. That's right. His dad was absolutely uh, dead set against a career in music. He wanted Dvorak to follow in the family footsteps and become a butcher. He went and studied butchery. I understand he majored in prime rib, but uh, <laughs> it didn't take. And uh, he ended up finding an uncle who supported his musical training and it wasn't exactly the rest is history. It took Dvorak a while to get uh, to get really settled, but Brahms had a lot to do with that. Brahms was a great champion of Antonin Dvorak's. There are certain Germanic touches in Dvorak's music, aren't there? Because Absolutely. he was influenced by Brahms and by Wagner and Beethoven. Yeah, he adored Wagner early on. He loved Brahms all his life. But tonight you're going to hear pure Czech music of the most irresistible variety, Slavonic but dance. But it's original compositions. He didn't steal from folk melodies of the land. That's he, right. He, created all of this. It sounds like something you would record in the fields of Prague or Bohemia, but it's pure Dvorak all the way. All right, for those of you who are not familiar with the concerts here at the Hollywood Bowl, we always begin with a national anthem. The concert master has uh, tuned the orchestra, and so we are just now awaiting the arrival of our guest conductor, Heichiro Oyama. That's right. I love that name. <laughs> He'll be out momentarily, and there's going to be a huge balloon launch. I don't know if you'll see it on the screen, but all around the Hollywood Bowl tonight in honor of this finale of the 1989 summer season. So you can imagine the balloons. Here is Heichiro Oyama to officially open this concert from the Hollywood Bowl with our national anthem. The national anthem and now music of Antonin Dvorak, Slavonic Dance, Opus 46, Number 8.
a marvelous opener for this 1989 fireworks finale concert at the Hollywood Bowl featuring the Los Angeles Philharmonic. The music of Antonin Vorjak, Slavonic Dance Number 8, Opus 46. We'll return right after these messages. You're listening to 91.5 KUSC Los Angeles, KSCA Santa Barbara at 88.7, or to KCPB Thousand Oaks 91.1. We'll rejoin Gail Eichenthal and Alex Trebek in a few moments as the stage is prepared for Grieg's Piano Concerto. Good evening, I'm Gene Parrish, and I'd like to welcome our radio audience tonight, especially those of you who listen regularly to KFAC. By now, we are all sadly aware that KFAC will retire from its 54 years of great classical music broadcasting next Wednesday, and KUSC will lose its commercial classical neighbor up to dial. But you will not be without classical music. Classical music is alive and well in Los Angeles on 91.5 KUSC. Classical music lovers, this is an open invitation from all of us at KUSC to join the only full-time celebration of classical music available on radio in Los Angeles. Now there's something you can really count on. Like a morning sunrise over the high Sierras. Or like a walk along the beach at sunset. Or just sitting at home listening to the radio. Discover KUSC 91.5 on your FM dial. We're the home of today's classical music in L.A., and we want you to get to know us. Call right now for your free guide to our classical music programming, 1-800-421-1717. That's 1-800-421-1717 for your free KUSC program guide. Classical music, we revel in it. Please call us right now, that toll-free number once again, 1-800-421-1717, for your complimentary copy of the KUSC Program Guide and become acquainted with our hundreds of classical music programs. I'd also like to invite all our listeners to tune in at noon on September 20th, that's Wednesday, as KUSC salutes KFAC in a historic one-hour simulcast. I'll be your host, along with Rich Caparella of KFAC, for an hour of special memories and some great classical music, of course. Those telephone numbers once again to obtain your complimentary copy of KUSC's guide to all of our classical music programs are toll-free 1-800-421-1717 and in the 213 area 744-1717. And now back to Hollywood Bowl and Emil Naumov's performance of the Grieg Piano Concerto. If you're going to be a composer and you're going to write a piano concerto, you might as well do it the way Edvard Grieg did and make it a doozy. That's it's a right. special work, isn't it? It is. The, only, the, only, one, one the only one he wrote. Uh, he did it once. He did it right. It's a classic. Uh, it'll be familiar to all of our listeners and viewers, I'm sure, uh, especially those fiery opening bars. And Talking about fiery opening bars, uh, we watched Emil Naumov, the soloist, perform last night, and he really worked that piano. He broke a string <laughs> on right. the piano at the bass end, and I've never seen that happen before. I understand and Beethoven used to do that all the time, so he's got a great tradition behind him. But uh, if it happens tonight, you'll know that uh, this is a particularly fiery pianist. It's not a real serious thing. The, the tuner, Ron Elliott, just came quickly on and, and cut the string off, and they'll, uh, they'll repair it later. So don't worry too much about the piano. But it will be, I'm sure, another marvelous performance, uh, full of just the right temperament for this passionate concerto by Grieg. Emil Naumov is not only a musician, he's a composer as well, isn't he? He started uh, studying composition at the age of six. Uh, uh, had a work published by the time he was 10 and most interestingly one of his major teachers was Nadia Boulanger he must have been one of her very youngest pupils because she died about 10 years ago but he studied with her in Paris so mm -hmm. uh, marvelous training Emil Namov a Bulgarian born artist there now walking now. on stage with Heichiro Oyama for Grieg's Piano Concerto in A minor continuing this live concert from the Hollywood Bowl
Thank you.
wizardry of the Bulgarian-born pianist Emil Naumov. He performed with the Los Angeles Philharmonic under assistant conductor Heichiro Oyama, the piano concerto in A minor, Op. 16, by Edvard Grieg. We've and had he to performed appeal. very, very well indeed. And listen to the applause from this audience. Well-deserved applause. I don't know if I should say this, Alex, but we did have to peel you off the floor. That's still a favorite piece of yours, I'm sure, after that stunning rendition. Yes, indeed. And we have more fascinating people for you to meet, ladies and gentlemen, when we return live from the Hollywood Bowl right after these messages. It's intermission time at Hollywood Bowl. We're going to rejoin KCOP for some special features as we wait for the start of the second half of our stereo simulcast of the final concert of the summer at the Hollywood Bowl. Good evening, I'm Gene Parrish, and the time is 24 and a half past 9 o'clock. Our regular Saturday evening programming has been preempted for this special concert by the Los Angeles Philharmonic. It's exciting to spend an evening with these great musicians, but once a summer really isn't often enough, so we've arranged for you to hear the Philharmonic every Monday night on KUSC. At the age of 80, Elliot Carter stands as a towering figure in American music, an incomparably brilliant innovator whose highly complex scores have won countless awards and universal admiration. But on this week's Los Angeles Philharmonic broadcast, we'll introduce you to another side of Carter with a lush and downright lyrical elegy for strings. On the podium this week, the orchestra's assistant conductor, Heichiro Oyama. In addition to the Carter, he'll lead a trio of Russian showpieces, Stravinsky's Firebird, Azorsky's Hovanchina Prelude, and with the acclaimed Russian cellist Natasha Gutmann as soloist, the cello concerto number no. two by Dmitry Shostakovich. This is Gail Eichenthal inviting you to join me for another concert by the Los Angeles Philharmonic. Join Gail Eichenthal this and every Monday night at 7 o'clock for concerts by the Los Angeles Philharmonic. And to be absolutely certain that you hear the Phil's concerts and all the other great classical music programming on KUSC, we have a special invitation to you tonight. Call us right now at 1-800-421-1717 for your free sample copy of the KUSC program guide. Toll free, 1-800-421-1717, or in the local area in the 213, it's 744-1717. And we'll rush your copy to you so that you can be front row center in your own living room for concerts by the Los Angeles Philharmonic. Call now, there's plenty of time before our simulcast resumes. Those numbers again, toll free, 1-800-421-1717, or the 213 area number is 744-1717. One seven. We have volunteers waiting to take your call. You'll be not talking to a tape machine, but to a live volunteer here in our studios. We'll take the information, your name and address, and get our program guide out to you right away. Now let's return to our simulcast and a conversation with some young musicians. In 1982, the Philharmonic's executive vice president and managing director, Ernest Fleischmann, joined with a world-renowned conductor and composer, Leonard Bernstein, to establish the Los Angeles Philharmonic Institute right here at the Hollywood Bowl, a place where young conductors and players could sharpen their skills. Today, under the dynamic leadership of the great cellist and USC faculty member, Lynn Harrell, the Institute draws applicants and guest artists from all over the world. I had the opportunity to chat with Ernest Fleischmann here at the Bowl a few days ago, and we discussed the program at some length. A tremendous uh, lack on the West Coast for a really intensive uh, training course for young musicians. And it sort of evolved out of a, a number of conversations we had before uh, Mr. Bernstein came here to conduct the Philharmonic. And, uh, they said, okay, if, if you're really serious, you better give a, uh, a lot of time to getting it off the ground. This institute is now geared, and in that it's quite unique, it is geared really to the young orchestral musician. Um, it is a tremendous amount of hard work. Um, there are two, three sessions um, every day, for six days a week. Um, they play perhaps too many concerts, but they play at least one concert a week. 
um, of very demanding repertoire, uh, ranging from the Beethoven Ninth to an old Lutoslavsky program. It seems to me natural to, to be, first of all, to, to be relaxed myself during the rehearsals and to convey, in a way, this feeling to the players. I think it's a good influence on our students in the Institute yes. to be exposed to uh, music of this kind, but also in an atmosphere, uh, of, in a sort of friendly uh, cooperative atmosphere. Aside from players, the Institute also trains conductors, including fellow Kate Tamarkin and Associate Director David Allen Miller. We're at the tail end of what has been a very intense seven weeks, and uh, looking back on that time, what has the Institute done for you? Well, this Institute has been a very unique opportunity for me. There are, often when you go to a workshop, there may be one main conducting teacher. The way this one is set up, there are different conductors in every week, world-class conductors, and they coach the conductors uh, in their, uh, not spare time, but there's time for them to work with us and to coach us. So I've had the, the opportunity to have, I don't know how many, six or seven, uh, different viewpoints to come in to coach and talk to all of the conductors here. I would say that the more I study conducting or the more I work as a conductor, the more I'm convinced that the things that can be taught are very nebulous and that it's almost um, a life endeavor to become a conductor because there's so many different elements that go into developing as a conductor, uh, knowing music, knowing uh, the instruments, counterpoint, harmony, the repertoire, opera, symphony, knowing also chamber music, the song repertoire, so that that enriches your interpretation of a specific orchestral piece. Really knowing music in the most profound and complete way, and then also the whole other side of conducting, which is the communicative side. This business of wondering, pondering why the greatest conductors are all in their 60s and 70s, I'm beginning to understand it, because it takes that long a time, perhaps, to really um, have all, all your the aspects of your knowledge coalesce. With me is the artistic director of the Los Angeles Philharmonic Institute for Young Musicians and Conductors, and he also happens to be uh, arguably the greatest cellist in the world, which of course makes him uh, even uh, a more beneficial teacher for these students. Lynn Harrell, it's lovely to be with you. It's wonderful to be back, yeah. What entices you to spend uh, a very intensive seven weeks working with kids? I guess it's partly because my father who was a great singer and he he thought that teaching was just an important part of the responsibility to the art form to give back what one has received I had the wonderful fortune of playing under Stravinsky, George Sell, Casals, uh, James Levine, Karyon when I was in orchestra myself and I gleaned from these great artists very, very significant part of what I feel I am as a musician. Um, to be able to try to give that back to young students who have, haven't had the, the kind of exposure that I was able to have. The Institute is of an importance far beyond what it seems, just a group of gifted young musicians giving concerts and getting instruction. It's something that I hope is there to stay and that I hope will continue to improve year to year the way it has been in, uh, improving and it, that it'll give um, the outside world uh, an idea that the Los Angeles Philharmonic is really much more than just a symphony orchestra. A stunning L.A. success story. We'll be right back with more of Live from the Hollywood Bowl. You're listening to 91.5 KUSC Los Angeles. Good evening, I'm Gene Parrish. It's 
26 and a half minutes now before 10 o'clock, intermission time at the Hollywood Bowl. We'll return to our simulcast when our hosts, Gail Eichenthal and Alex Trebek, chat with some performers past and present at the Bowl. And you'll meet fascinating performers every Sunday on 91.5 KUSC. Take a moment right now to meet Bill McLaughlin, host of St. Paul Sunday Morning. Well, it took three years of trying, but we finally found the date that works for them. Hi, this is Bill McLaughlin, and the group that we are trying so hard to book for St. Paul Sunday Morning is the Emerson String Quartet, and the date is this Sunday. Now all we need is you. So join us to hear this brilliant ensemble in works of Haydn, Smetna, Schuller, and Beethoven. That's the Emerson String Quartet, this week on St. Paul Sunday Morning, here on your public radio station. Join Bill McLaughlin, host of St. Paul Sunday Morning, one of the most popular programs on public radio, tomorrow and every Sunday morning on KUSC at 10.30. We'd like you to learn more about all the classical music programs on KUSC, and if you call us right now at toll-free 1-800-421-1717, we'll rush you your free sample copy of the KUSC program guide. That's 1-800-421-1717. 1717, or in the 213 area, 744-1717. The guide contains information about the great orchestra concerts we broadcast every evening, the special programs for opera lovers and record collectors, and the highlights of each and every broadcast day. Call right now and speak to a friendly volunteer who is here just to help you. 1-800-421-1717 or 213-744-1717. Your phone call will take just a moment and will bring you many hours of entertainment and music. That toll-free number, once again, is 1-800-421-1717 or in the 213 area, 744-1717. And now, in just a moment, back to the Hollywood Bowl. I hope you're enjoying this evening's fireworks finale concert. Coming to you live from the Hollywood Bowl. At the moment, I am live in the Hollywood Bowl with four and a half members of the orchestra, and I'd like you to meet them. On my far right, Patricia Kindle, contrabassoon. On my immediate right, Rainer Carroll, percussion. To my left, Dale Hikawa, and a child to be named later. Jeffrey Reynolds on bass trombone. And Jeffrey, you've been with the orchestra the longest in this group, 20 years. You've been here through Ju Zubin Mehta, Giulini, and Andre Previn. Tell me how the orchestra adjusts to these heavyweights. Well, we're professionals, and they all have their style. They're all very uh, focused at what they do, and uh, we're focused at what we do, and it, it always meshes somehow. Is it a double adjustment? Do they kind of uh, adjust to the orchestra? Because you're a group of 100 people who've been working together for a long time. Literally and figuratively, uh, each group adjusts like a marriage. And, I mean, the conductor and the orchestra, and they start going toward a center place, and they actually make music together, which is, I mean, that's tried and true kind of rhetoric, but it, it's true. Dale, you're going to have your baby when? In February. Now, a lot of people wonder if being a member of a Philharmonic, such as the L.A., is a full-time job, or will it allow you time to look after your baby and continue your work with the orchestra? Are there provisions made for uh, expectant mothers and uh, when you have the baby? Yes, there are. There's a maternity leave. I'd have to say that each person in the orchestra has a different, let's just say, a different duty to his music and to his instrument and what he does, how much time he wants to invest in practicing on his own, other than what we do with the orchestra. So that, that might be an individual question, I, okay. I think. Then I won't pursue it anymore. <laughs> Thank you. Rainer, you we had a little item a few moments ago on television about the Institute. You were a student at the Institute. Tell me your recollections of that. Good experience for you? Excellent. I was there the first two years they had the Institute. And there are many aspects of the program that are really beneficial to a student. And one of the main ones is working under a major conductor. Like I worked with Bernstein and Eric Leinsdorf and other things we had were master classes with the percussionist and the philharmonic along with playing with the orchestra combined concert. 
That was great. But as a percussionist, you're not called upon to work as often as, say, the violins. Exactly. You've got to stay alert. And in the next piece, for instance, the Tchaikovsky, there will be a 10-minute period where you're not doing anything. How right. do you stay mentally alert? Well, you get to the point where you know the piece so well that you don't actually have to count the measures. You just know when your part is approaching and when to actually get up and perform. All right. Patricia? Your seat at Contrabassoon over here is directly in line with the soloists who perform with an orchestra. If they do a marvelous job, and I think Emil Naumov this evening performed much better than last night, does that translate? Can you feel that? Can you sense that from where you sit? Oh, absolutely. We're involved in what's going on stage, so we're participating with them. This is like an extended family, isn't it? Uh, and you've been with the orchestra for about 10 years now. You've traveled with them. Mm -hmm. uh, what's the fun part of being a member of the LA Philharmonic, and what's the tough part? Well, the fun part are the relationships with the people in the orchestra, because I think as a whole we have 105 of wonderful people. Are there any jokers in the group? Oh, of course. Wouldn't be an orchestra without them. Uh -huh. <laughs> any difficult parts? Um, well, sometimes the schedule is grueling, you know, and when we're on tour, if they're one-night stands, that gets to be very tough. Well, you make beautiful music, and I know that sounds cliche, but thank you all for spending these few moments with us. Now let's go back up top to join Gail. Thank you very much, Alex. You know, all of us as patrons of the Hollywood Bowl play a part in the selection of the programs every summer. And one famous name that always seems to be at the top of the list is a man with many, many talents. A stage performer, motion picture star, composer, author. He's got a brand new autobiography out called It Wasn't All Velvet. I'm speaking about Mel Torme. In a recent interview here at the Hollywood Bowl, he told us how it all began. Well, I got to Hollywood really in uh, about 1942 originally to join a band, but once I got out here it was a dream come true because I'm from Chicago and I probably went to more movies in Chicago than any man, woman and child whoever was born and bred in that town. Great movie fan and consequently when I finally came out here to stay, to live, uh, just about 1943. I came out here to do a movie called Higher and Higher at RKO. And uh, from then on in, that was it for me. I, I was a uh, never look back Californian. You sing, you compose. On top of that, you've just written an autobiography called It Wasn't All Velvet. The book is really a, kind of a running commentary on what it's like to be in show business at a very tender age. I started at the age of four as a professional and also to uh, experience some of the vagaries of this business, some of the ups, the downs, the swinging of the pendulum, as it were. Uh, and I hope that it ends, I think it ends, on a rather bright and hopeful and positive and upbeat note. You're a man of the world, you've performed just about everywhere, yet you've said the Hollywood Bowl holds a special place in your heart. Let me put it this way. When I come to play the Hollywood Bowl, it's the only time that I get a little tremor a very tiny little butterfly in the stomach. I, I'm never, ever nervous. I mean, I, this is my job. I do it for a living. It's like a guy getting into the left seat of a 747 who's flown thousands and thousands of miles, and he just, he does it. It's what he does. Well, this is what I do, except the bowl is not intimidating. It's wonderful. I love it. I look forward to it. But it's so special to me that I do, I, I'm a little, a little bit nervous on every opening night at the Bowl. Mel Torme, all your fans at the Hollywood Bowl want you to know we love you. Mel Torme loves the Hollywood Bowl. Good evening. I'm Gene Parrish, and you're listening to 91.5 KUSC. We'll return to our simulcast to meet the man who literally conducts tonight's magnificent fireworks. KUSC's classical music programming has its own share of fireworks. KUSC fills your days and nights with great music. From the most recent minimalist masterworks to the spectacular... Seven. Speak to one of our volunteers and indulge your good taste in classical music tonight. Those numbers once again, the toll-free number 
421-1717, or in the 213 area, 744-1717. And now back to the bowl for some insider information on fireworks and a lush romantic performance of Tchaikovsky's beloved Romeo and Juliet. Welcome back. Gail, during the break, uh, you were mentioning Gene Evans, the man who designed tonight's fireworks display and his highly uh, talented technical crew. And I understand they're responsible for making 75% of the fireworks we'll be enjoying tonight? That's right, Alex. They started working on it weeks ago, and uh, all of their wonderful, wonderful uh, fireworks training and hours of work all goes into place. Wizards in the country, Gene Evans, creative consultant for Astro Pyrotechnics. Well, we're going to see a phenomenal display this evening, I know, Gene, as we always do. How do you put this show together? How long does it take to plan a fireworks show for the Hollywood Bowl? Well, it probably uh, would encompass at least a month of time uh, from, from inception to completion. How many people do you have working on a particular fireworks display? Today, uh, the crew is 12 plus the two leads, so that's 14 people here today. Wow. Of course, today actually started physical on site two days ago. We do a preset. Yesterday was a what we call a, a full preset, and then today is the completion of tonight's show. We first have to consult with the Philharmonic people on the music that they want, um, and then get representative recordings of that music, and then we take it back to my cubby hall and start playing it over and over and over and until I get mental visual uh, images of what I'd like to see with the particular music. orientation is to the tableau scene type rather than, than the big bombastic aerial type. So in a sense the fireworks display that we're going to see tonight is of the tradition of uh, the original display that Handel and his friends enjoyed. Yes, we have the benefit of modern technology and of course chemicals that exist now didn't exist then but, but uh, very much so. Uh, from a format standpoint, it's, it's of English tradition. You'll get to enjoy Gene's work a little later on in our program, but right now, fireworks of a different kind, <laughs> musical right. fireworks. Music of Tchaikovsky, Overture Fantasy, Romeo and Juliet, one of the most beloved works in the orchestral repertoire. Here again is the assistant conductor of the orchestra, Heichiro Oyama, for Music of Tchaikovsky.
The Overture Fantasy Romeo and Juliet by Tchaikovsky, the Los Angeles Philharmonic under the direction of Heichiro Oyama with a very interesting obligato from Thunder and Lightning. Alex, I can't imagine a more dramatic backdrop for this soaringly romantic work than rain here at the Hollywood Bowl. Well, we will have more music, Handel's music for the Royal Fireworks when we return following these messages. You're listening to 91.5 KUSC Los Angeles, KSCA Santa Barbara 88.7, or to KCPB Thousand Oaks 91.1, the public radio service of the University of Southern California. Good evening once again, I'm Gene Parrish, and in a moment we'll return to tonight's stereo simulcast from the Hollywood Bowl for the spectacular fireworks finale to this 1989 season. Accompanied, most appropriately, by the Los Angeles Philharmonic's rousing performance of Handel's music for the Royal Fireworks. As we prepare for the thrilling conclusion to this evening's program, the time is nine minutes after ten o'clock. No, let's make it ten minutes after ten. The music we'll be hearing soon is stirring. It can even raise your heart rate. But sometimes, modern life provides just a little too much of the wrong kind of stimulation. It's a right Reverend Dr. Billy Saul Hargis coming to you from Holy Land, USA. Covered in our club. McDonald's. But what with all these commies? Do, do it make you like, you know, tired? Why are you watching me? Are you trivial? <laughs> <laughs> Ah, KUSC, an island of sanity in the tempestuous sea of modern life. Escape it all. Just call 1-800-421-1717 for your free sample program guide and indulge yourself with great classical music. If you want the kind of pampering that KUSC can provide, call tonight for your free introductory copy of our monthly program guide. It lists all the classical music programs that we broadcast, so you'll never miss your favorite indulgence. Just call toll-free 1-800-421-1717 or in the 213 area, 744-1717. And we'll rush you a complimentary copy of the KUSC program guide. It won't take but a moment to call, and the call will bring you information about hours of entertainment and great classical music. The number's again toll-free, 1-800-421-1717, and in the 213 area, 744-1717. Our telephone lines have been literally blanked out tonight, so if you had trouble getting through earlier, keep trying. Once again, the number's toll-free 1-800-421-1717 in the 213 area 744-1717. Now we rejoin tonight's simulcast live from the Hollywood Bowl for the colorful conclusion to a wonderful summer. Handel's music for the Royal Fireworks on 91.5 KUSC. The umbrella and the raincoat need no explaining, <laughs> but what grieves me, Gail, is the fact that all of this is due to the fringes of Hurricane Octave, that That's right. musical hurricane that has decided to dump a little water on us. Maybe there are not enough octaves in tonight's repertoire or something like that. You would think uh, a hurricane with a musical name would be a little more sensitive. When does it rain at the Hollywood Bowl? Tonight. That's when. Tonight. They have uh, reset the stage very quickly, and there was an announcement made a few moments ago that uh, got a great deal of applause here at the Hollywood Bowl. That's Mr. right. Mr. Fleischman. Uh, 
said the magic words. They, he said that uh, we will have music for the Royal Fireworks, but we're going to skip the first three movements of the musical piece. That's right, and I think George Frederick Handel would forgive us under the circumstances. Uh, it's really fascinating to look around. 18,000 people, it's a packed house. People take, some people brought umbrellas. They heard about the forecast. I think there are about seven or 8,000 umbrellas. Seven I lost or 8,000 umbrellas, which means about 8,000, 9,000 people under programs, under uh, pieces of paper, whatever they can, but they're staying on for the fireworks. The show must go on. They're very excited about the piece. Yeah. You have been to the Hollywood Bowl much more frequently than I have. Have they ever canceled the fireworks display before? The only time it happened, Alex, was last year. There was one incident where... Uh, because of rain? Be because of the, the weather. But the, the show's been going on for at least, oh, about 27 years, and this is the first time that uh, rain has has happened at the bowl during a concert, as far as I know. And, Last night uh, they were concerned because there was some wind. That's right. And the fire marshal was concerned that perhaps the wind blowing in the wrong direction might cause some problems in the uh, nearby hillsides. But tonight uh, there's no wor worry of, of wind at all. It's just the, the rain. I wonder if the uh, fireworks, you spoke with Gene, uh, did he mention, uh, are, are they geared to deal with uh, wet conditions? It's electronically set I assume off. so, because everybody's saying the show's going to go on. So they must uh, they must know what they're doing. The fire marshal is here. There's lightning and thunder as well, so it's going to be a spectacular show. Interestingly, there is a historical precedent for this. Back in 1749, when the music was premiered in an outdoor setting in Green Park in London, there was rain threatening, and they had some other technical difficulties that night. They almost burned down the pavilion. It started That's out being right. 100 feet high and 400 feet wide and it caught on fire and the musicians didn't miss a beat they kept playing I'm fascinated about the fact that uh, Gene and his pyrotechnics crew have imported somebody to uh, read the score for them so that they get the fireworks off at the right moment it's such a terribly uh, technical skill to be able to read music that fast and to be able to cue the, all the pyrotechnicians so that the fireworks happen uh, simultaneously with the music which is what it's all about and uh, that applause? No, it's not the conductor. Greeting the appearance on stage of the principal oboe of this performance of yes, no the violins, fireworks. No, no fiddles in the uh, royal uh, That's right. music for the royal fireworks. King George II specified to handle no fiddles, and he got what he asked for, of course. He was paying the commission. Believe me, all, all of the string players are very happy. They don't like bringing their instruments out in weather I'm like sure this. They don't. But what I want to know is why didn't they schedule water music tonight? Now, that would have been appropriate. That's a water joke, isn't it, Gail? It is a water joke. <laughs> and I love it. We're full of water jokes tonight. I'm only sorry that I did not <laughs> think of it first. But as we mentioned a few moments ago, ladies and gentlemen, music for the Royal Fireworks, but we're skipping the overture and the second and third movements. We're going directly into the fourth movement. The fireworks begin shortly after that. And then the big finale, of course, uh, the fifth movement. And it will be spectacular even in the rain, I can assure you. Here comes our conductor, a gutsy man, <laughs> Mr. Oyama. I bet you it's his first experience with rain. And handles royal fireworks music, or most of it.
Well, for those of you who, like me, were wondering what effect the rain would have on the fireworks display, you have your answer. Very little. It was just as spectacular as it was last night or last year or the year before that, Gail. Absolutely. This is an evening uh, no one here will ever forget. Wet and wild fireworks at the Hollywood Bowl. Hey, Chiro Oyama coming back on stage. And there's always well that special bow. touch when the conductor takes his bow. There we go. <laughs> However, Mr. Evans and his fireworks crew are geared for only two bows by the conductor. <laughs> After that, he does it without the accompanying fireworks. I'm sure that it's a special uh, occasion for the conductor to get that kind of reception when he walks on stage. He's getting a great reception now, not only for the music, but for his courage in staying out in the storm <laughs> and performing this work. I hope he uh, has a hot toddy waiting for him at home. Heichiro Oyama, assistant conductor of the Los Angeles Philharmonic. An unforgettable performance tonight. We'll be back right after this. This is 91.5 KUSC Los Angeles, and we have a few moments before we return to Gail and Alex. Plenty of time to call 1-800-421-1717 or in the 213 area, 744-1717 for your free introductory copy of the KUSC Program Guide. Good evening, I'm Gene Parrish, and it's 10.25 and a half. Did you enjoy this evening's performance by the Los Angeles Philharmonic? Well, we want to be certain that you don't miss their performances every week on KUSC, with the lovely host of tonight's simulcast as your guide. Here's what Gail Eichenthal has in store for you this week. At the age of 80, Elliot Carter stands as a towering figure in American music, an incomparably brilliant innovator whose highly complex scores have won countless awards and universal admiration. But on this week's Los Angeles Philharmonic broadcast, we'll introduce you to another side of Carter with a lush and downright lyrical elegy for strings. On the podium this week, the orchestra's assistant conductor, Heichiro Oyama, in addition to the Carter, he'll lead a trio of Russian showpieces, Stravinsky's Firebird, Mazorsky's Hovanchina Prelude, and with the acclaimed Russian cellist Natasha Gutmann as soloist, the Cello Concerto No. 2 by Dmitry Shostakovich. This is Gail Eichenthal inviting you to join me for another concert by the Los Angeles Philharmonic. Tune in Monday evening at 7 o'clock for another in the award-winning concert series by the Los Angeles Philharmonic, right here on 91.5 KUSC. And to be absolutely certain that you never miss a concert broadcast, you need to have a copy of the KUSC Program Guide. We'll send you one tonight if you'll give us a call at 1-800-421-1717 or in the 213 area, 744-1717. It couldn't be simpler. Your complimentary guide to the great classical music on KUSC is available by calling toll-free 1-800-421-1717 421-1717 or in the 213 area 744-1717 We have a troop of wonderful volunteers here to answer your phone call and to answer your questions about receiving a complimentary copy of the program guide Once again, those toll-free numbers 1-800-421-1717 or in the 213 area 744-1717 It just takes a few moments and... Then you can get back to the conclusion of tonight's broadcast from Hollywood Bowl. If you're having trouble getting through, our lines have been very busy. Keep trying, and uh, we're going to have our volunteers standing by for some minutes after the broadcast. Now back to the bowl, and Gail Eichenthal and Alex Trebek for the conclusion to tonight's simulcast. I hope you've enjoyed this special live concert on 91.5 KUSC. Ah, uh, the joys of live <laughs> television. <laughs> Gail, I think it has been a wonderful experience sharing this evening with you. And after the third year, I would like to hope that there would be another one. Especially if it doesn't rain. Yeah. Well, there's no one with whom I'd rather be broadcasting in the rain than you, Alex Trebek. But in spite of the weather, we still have a lot of important people to say thanks to. <laughs> we certainly do. We'd like to take this moment to thank members of the Los Angeles Philharmonic Association, especially Mr. Ernest Fleischman, Mr. Robert Harth, and a very fond farewell to Robert, who leaves for Aspen after this week, Ms. Laura Dixon, who did so much to make this broadcast a reality. Also, to the great KUSC crew, headed by Ted Ancona and 
Ford King. And they were the ones that brought you this concert in marvelous living wet stereo. Yeah, and our thanks also to Supervisor Ed Edelman, who has been a driving force in keeping the Hollywood Bowl a reality for all of us to enjoy. That's right. And one more person we want to thank, Mel Torme, who... Uh, highlighted our intermission also david allen miller and gene evans for being a part of today's Especially special gene feature evans because his stuff <laughs> worked speaking Amazing. of working i'll be catching you working on knx radio from now on is that right thank you alex you will and i'll look forward to listening to you and watching you on jeopardy every night as i do and thank you by the way for not forcing me to put every comment in the form of a question tonight <laughs> i really appreciate that my pleasure this has been a lot of fun we hope you've enjoyed this also ladies and gentlemen the third live broadcast of the fireworks finale from the hollywood bowl we've enjoyed bringing it to you in spite of the rain it makes it kind of fun and i certainly hope you enjoyed listening to it in stereo on 91.5 KUSC. May we remind you that you are watching LA's very independent Channel 13, where you can see News 13 at 10 o'clock, Monday through Friday, with Warren Olney and Wendy Rutledge. And uh, when you watch them, you don't have to put up with the camera breakups that we've experienced uh, a few times this evening because of the rain. I hope you will uh, allow us that uh, excuse because it is pouring right now and the equipment is not made to withstand all of this. But for Gail and all of the rest of us, thank you so much for watching. Good night. We hope to see you again next year. Good night. The audio producer of tonight's stereo simulcast was Ted Ancona. Our producer was Ford King, technical supervisor Lyle Henry, operations supervisor Larry Mayer, the KUSC stage director Pablo Garcia, engineer Mark Hatwan, master control engineer Steve Seavey and Larry Mayer. Our executive producer was Tom Deacon. Special thanks to Susan, Tail, t Susan Taylor, that is, Gail Eichenthal and Bill Kappelman. Our volunteers tonight were Mary Harrell, Mary Jo Lang, Joe Shaw, Francie Rudy, Dave Stiller, Valerie Treat, Roy Gardner, and Phil Richards. I'm your host, Gene Parrish. Thanks for listening. Now at 29 minutes before 11 o'clock, we have music to take us up to time for collector's item with your very own Don Tate. Here is the Corellia Suite, Opus 11, by Jean Sibelius, performed by the Finnish Radio Symphony Orchestra, conducted by Jukka Pekka Sareste. <laughs>